Well, hello everybody. Uh, welcome to uh, this uh, episode of uh, Insta Vlogs. Insta Vlogs is um, the second half of BBTRL. It's Big Bang Theory RL. The first half of the show is uh, BTS Vlog, which is all behind the scenes uh, going on. It's a vlog that takes you behind the scenes of what's going on here at Cyborg Alpha and my life. This part, Insta Vlogs. Uh, is my research notes. These are going from the ad hoc notes to more organized notes. So, BTS vlogs are the ad hoc notes and my general general my general journal. Insta vlogs are more specific. And into here, as I uh, bring things into a more specific uh, focus, uh, I've got them titled right here. Uh, so you'll see the title of the of the vlog, uh, what particular vlog we're in, and this time we're actually looking at IMO. In IMO, uh, I decided to sort of uh, bring this in because there's a TV, there's a web series on Awesomeness TV on YouTube called IMO, and it's about five minutes in length, and they talk about various different topics. It's, it's kind of like a uh, five minute version of Oprah, if you will. But the thing is, is that I know from a re as a researcher and, and from my experience that five minutes is not in depth. So this is here. Uh, we're gonna title this one this vlog, and there's gonna be a whole series of them coming along. It's called IMO. In depth is not five minutes. <laughs> in other words, we're gonna take topics that come up on IMO, and we're going to expand on them. We're going to look at them more seriously, and we're going to develop them further. In other words, we're not going to simply uh, uh, um, have something that's uh, that that's uh, serious and just sort of treat it, you know, well, okay, five minutes, and give a five minute commentary on it, and expect that's all there is to it. There's actually not. That's not actually the case. There's actually a lot to explore out there. Uh, as you begin looking at a topic, uh, it, you take your notes, your initial notes. And then as your initial notes, you, you, as you take your initial notes, there's actually more to what you end up going to do. There, there's ways to expand. There's ways to expand outwards, outwards, and uh, find what you're looking for. Not necessarily what you're looking for, but find a more specific answer to things. You can grow your understanding. You can grow what you know about this particular topic, and that way. Uh, you can get a better sense of well, okay, where things are because if you don't, if you only take the superficial knowledge, and this is what most people do, is most people get the superficial knowledge. And this is somebody tells you something. Oh, I saw this on the news, or this book had a particular article on things. And other people will do is they'll look at a book, they'll read a book, and go, ah, well, it, if it's in the book, it must be true. Well, that's not necessarily the case. Like I give you an example here is, is that this book here. It's uh, on the uh, history of World War II, and it's written by Winston Churchill. And it's a very good read. I really do enjoy that. I've read it several times. Uh, but you have to remember, and, and this is what I remember as I'm reading this, is that this is his view of World War II. And but I think, but it, 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 and well, this, all this may not necessarily be exactly true, because this is from his perspective. 
what you do need to understand, and this is what, what the good part is, is that you can gain other people's perspective from what you're reading. So, in other words, uh, if you remember that when someone's giving you an opinion or someone's telling you something, that it's a perspective. That doesn't necessarily, and perspective does not necessarily mean that it's wrong. But at the same time, it doesn't mean that it's right. It's simply a perspective. And as you start gaining various different perspectives, you can start going and say, okay, where are the common points? Where are the points that disagree? And why do they disagree? And why do they, why do they agree? And as you start this analysis, this will bring you into a much better understanding of the topic that you're, that you're looking into. And this is sort of the case here, is that we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take a look at ideas. We're going to take a look at some of the things that, that are posed uh, on IMO, some of the things that are talked about, and we're going to expand them out. Now, a lot of people won't do this. A lot of uh, channels don't do this. For the particular reason, they don't think that uh, teenage girls are... Uh, have that much of an attention span. So in other words, if you're looking at a standard site, they'll spoon, food, spoon feed you things, information, in 15 minute bites or 5 minute bites, uh, and they keep it very simple and very neat. But the thing is, is that they're doing this because they don't, they don't expect you to go anything, go any further. But the thing is, if you really do really want to know what's going on, you do have to ask those questions. It, the, the question is, what is beyond? Beyond what you're given in terms of this is what the truth is, and I'm an expert, and here's what the truth is, you need to believe me. Well, ask the question, why? Why do I need to believe you? What's beyond what you're telling me? Are there other perspectives? Are there other, what they call, truths out there? And the thing is, you'll find that, it, that you'll initially talk about truths, but you'll find as you, as you go out and explore other cultures and other ideas, that there isn't multiple truths out there. There are multiple perspectives, but there's not multiple truths that you can actually start seeing through the multiple perspectives, the multiple perspectives, uh, that there is actually a single defining truth. You can actually start going through things and, and, and say, okay, well, this I see over here, and you start connecting the two, between, you know, the, the two common points, and you can see results. Is a result from the thing you're observing in both situations good or are they bad? And if you see in both cases the bad, uh, a, 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 a thing that you're looking at, the thing that you're observing causes something bad, you can say, okay, the truth is this thing, because in both situations it's bad, it must be bad. That's a, that, that's a truth. That's a universal truth because uh, in both situations you're seeing that th this thing is uh, bad. And so that's a truth. But and the thing is, you can't have other truths against it. If particularly as you keep adding the observations in, and you start seeing uh, after observation after observation that this thing consistently produces bad results, then that's the that's the truth there. That's the truth, and there are no other truths against it. You can and the thing is, you can start seeing how people will say, okay, well this is true. This is one of the truths that this thing is actually good for you. But you can see the result down the road, and if you watch them, sort of be patient and watch how this thing that they say is good for you. If you see start seeing bad results down the road, even if the person themselves doesn't see it, then you can now start saying, "Okay, for some people, this thing appears to be true." But the end result is, for all people, for the number of people you've seen anyway, for, for, from your sample size, that it is bad for you. In other words, uh, beyond the initial perspective of how you see something, the end result over the sample of the number of people you've looked at, you've observed, I've observed, if out over all the people you've looked at, this, this, this is bad, then the end result is it's bad, regardless of the perspective. Uh, so this is sort of how we're going to take a look at uh, what um, they were talking about in IMO. In IMO, they're talking about pinning. Uh, let me see here. They were talking about <laughs> right here. Uh, we're gonna be looking at uh, pinning girls against girls with slut shaming. And uh, there's the second thing we'll talk about is that is called, let's talk about consent. And this has to do with the um, uh, the <laughs> what you call it the the. YouTube scandal, the YouTube scandal about uh, sex abuse on YouTube. 
we'll deal with that to a certain degree. But as I said, this episode is going to be sort of an introduction to things. We are going to go further out and explore uh, uh, beyond. We, we have our simple notes here. And then we're going to expand on these notes in later episodes. So uh, see you in the next segment. And we'll talk more in depth about, uh, uh, about these different topics. All right. I'll see you then. Welcome back to... Uh, this is the vlog's IMO, uh, five minutes is not in depth. Um, I still do have to work on these segues, is it, you know, the, um, going between, uh, different segments. So, let's get started anyways. Um, as I stated that, that their topic for the week was, uh, about slut shame, slut, what we call slut shaming. It says, pinning girls against girls with slut shaming. Uh, let's see if we can bring this up here and uh, get a little bit of it, uh, you know, hear a little bit of it. And it was IMO episode. Today we're talking about being proud of being a girl and the dangers of slut shaming. So... Yep. That was short. Okay, so that's that's their opinion on the whole situation here, and it goes on, but it's more of the same conversation. There is that is a very typical conversation that you would have between uh, let's not say teens, but everybody. Most conversations are not rather in depth; they're mostly loosely based opinions, and this is what you find in that. Now, the thing is, is that if we want to go into this and sort of understand this better, we need to understand the dynamic and the social behavior that goes on within that social dynamic. Uh, and to understand this, you have to look at the situation. Uh, if, and it's not really difficult to take a look at. Uh, let's look at how girls treat each other. And all you have to do is go into, uh, start from, starting from grade six, basically from middle school. On up, and you see the drama that occurs, occurs between girls. And you say, well, do girls want this drama? And most girls will say, oh, no, I don't want this drama. This drama is not for me and stuff. And, you know, I really don't want this drama. I don't know why the drama actually happens. And, you know, there's a lot of hands. There's a lot of facial uh, expressions. There's eye rolling and, and so on and so forth. But if you look at the choices of entertainment the girls make, that, that they make, and then this is the choice of entertainment, you will find that more often than not, they're into shows like Pretty Little Liars. Um, there's other shows like that, I think, was it uh, Gossip Girl? Uh, and almost any other show, like, was, was there, there's, 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 there's a whole bunch of them that are like that. I don't know what the shows are because I've never really watched them. I've watched them a bit. 
but they're more often than not centered around drama. I mean, oh, there's the other the, one, Degrassi, Degrassi High and Degrassi Junior High. There's two of them there uh, that are centered around drama. And the thing is, if you're making a choice that you find drama entertaining, and this is your entertainment choice, then your entertainment choices, the things you watch on a daily environment, on a daily basis, this provides you with the environment that you're in. That environment is going to affect you in ways that you don't necessarily understand that that or or are are not necessarily aware of. Let's not say you don't understand it. Let's say that you're not aware of. And the drama that occurs in entertainment can often spill over into and cause drama simply by a, a, a an effect of behavior that a be behavior that you observe or behavior that you witness often affects you and allows you to uh, to repeat that behavior in situations that you would not normally do so and this is true with violence this is true with, uh, with sexuality uh, and almost any other behavior is that the environment that you are in will often influence the behavior that you have in other words you reflect the people you hang around with. And the thing is, so if, if you hang around people who have bad influences, in other words, you have, let's say, let's say you hang around people who do a lot of drugs. At some point in time, although you may say, oh, this isn't going to affect me, that there will be an effect whether you see it or not. Uh, and this includes uh, becoming a drug addict yourself. Um, people say, oh, I'm strong, I won't do this. And Slowly but surely, you'll see if you stand off and observe that they will have an effect on drug, the, the, the drug culture that exists within their friends, within their environment, does affect them. It does impact on them. And at some point in time, if they stay in that environment in a prolonged manner, then they themselves become drug addicts. And, and again, this is a, a sort of an extreme example. You can sort of see this. Uh, in an extreme example, this sort of that you see that the environment does affect you, and it does it does affect your choices. Um, you can see this in an environment where people lie a lot. If you're in an environment where lying is normal, then it does again affect you. And in many cases, you start feeling that it's okay uh, to lie, and this is the environment that you sort of begin to emulate. And again, you is looking at not the perspective of things in terms of uh, whether something's okay or not okay, but looking at the overall the overall result of it. And there are a lot of people up there who will tell you that they're experts and gurus, and they'll answer as experts and gurus. And I had this uh, uh, about a week ago. Uh, there's this uh, person. Uh, her web her web YouTube channel is uh, Stacy Mac Healing. Uh, she made a comment about uh, one of the earlier uh, videos that I had post posted on um, about uh, for Insta vlogs about sexuality and uh, spiritual suicide, and she said uh, your uh, your culture and society shapes your belief your beliefs about your own sexuality and that of others. And again, this is true to a certain degree, but there's more about this. But I wanted to sort of find like her statement. There was a very short statement. And it's very difficult to sort of get from that one simple statement what she's trying to get at. The way, you do, the way you do understand what she's trying to get at, what she's trying to say, because people do say things in an off manner, is you have to go and sort of find out more about them. And this is where I say about myself, is I don't expect anyone to say, I don't, I, don't cut, I don't want people to say when you're watching this, oh, I'm an expert, believe me when I say this is true. This is not what I want. What I want you to do is I want you to start thinking about things and go on that extra distance and start asking questions. And so the thing is, when someone comes, does come up to you and say, oh, I'm an expert, you don't have to be angry at them and say, oh, no, you're an expert, and argue with them. Listen to what they're saying. And then afterwards, when you're done the conversation, go find out who they are. And often their experiences, and their advertised experiences, will give you a good idea of not only what they said, but why they said what they said. In other words, you, you, you're going out further to the, this, uh, to the, the doing this analysis. And this is exactly what I did here. I went to her, her, her YouTube channel, 
and her username is Healing Energy Videos. And I sort of had an idea of what that's going to be about, and a lot of it's going to be uh, Eastern Eastern mysticism. And here you have it. It's uh, uh, our philosophy. Everything in life has levels of energy and vibration connected to it. Each level has its own built has its own built-in filters and determines what uh, you are capable of manifesting in life. If you are repeatedly if you are if you are repeatedly creating what you don't want, then you are unconsciously stuck in an unproductive level. Okay, our work allows you to stop uh, creating what you don't want and start creating what you do. Uh, here, here, how it works. Okay, how it works. Uh, first is the power of inquiry and Stacy's and Stacy's willingness to engage in an, in a given topic for the purposes of distinguishing truth. In other words, uh, she's an expert, and her knowledge is going to help you see the truth. Uh, this includes examples and experiences from her own life and her extensive knowledge in the area of alternative healing and spiritual development. In other words, she is a guru. Uh, second, is the ongoing transformational healing that is provided through Stacy's uh, energy, energy healing videos. In other words, you're going to be healed through her videos. Uh, these powerful breakthrough sessions... These powerful sessions are designed to uh, break down and continually impact your current uh, uh, limiting vibrational field and shifting you to a higher level. This allows you to begin manifesting what you really want in life. Okay. Now, if I were a type of person that I've never come across this before, and I have, I've come across it before. This is actually standard Eastern mysticism. Eastern mysticism gives you a lot of we'll call it roundabout terms that doesn't give you any de definite or concrete answers. So this is actually what we would find if you went to India, you would find this all over the place in India. This is Hinduism. This is the guru. This is uh, the person sitting cross-legged talking about spirituality in a Zen garden. So, this is the standard in uh, India. And we'll say that India is not a Christian culture. It's, not a, it's, actually, a, uh, it's actually an alternative mystic culture. And it is into what we'll call alternative spiritual, let's give it the term, truths. And this is what, how we'll say it. Your, your culture and society shapes your beliefs about your sexuality and that of others. We're going to test this out in India. So, let's go around India. What do you see in India that is filled with these particular gurus who have all these amazing healing powers? Well, you see an immense amount of poverty. You see a massive rape problem that is not being solved anytime soon. Matter of fact, if you go into the Indian culture, and this, will get into, this gets into slut shaming, you will find God and gods and goddesses that approve of rape. That rape is part of their culture. And when you see this uh, and understand this, you see that what's going on in India in terms of uh, of the rape that's going on there, and, and and the dangers to women, the abuse of women in, in in India. You'll see that it permeates across the culture. That this is something that's permissible. And as you go into, let's say, let's say, well, is this specific to India? Is, because India is this perspective. Although you have a lot of different gods in India, and you'll find this across all forms of, god, of gods and goddesses, you'll find it uniform across um, uh, India's uh, polytheistic religion. In other words, you will find it with a god. A god will allow rape and murder, and so will goddesses. Goddesses will have the same thing. You will find that more often than not, when women are part of the ceremony, the, the religious ceremony, they're there as sexual objects. They're there to entice the male uh, into sexual acts that will lead, in, in Indian terms, the, 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 and this is, is reflected both in Buddhism 
and in other forms of Hinduism, if you read the Hindu, the Hindu Vedas, you will find that sexuality is a, uh, a, uh, a practice that is on the left path. The left path, the left hand path, takes you down towards darkness. The right hand path takes you towards lightness. And this is why, in, 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 for a Buddhist, uh, as you became more and more uh, enlightened, as, as you sought enlightenment, not only did you have to take up meditations of poverty, but you had to take up meditations of chastity as well, that the sexual behaviors, that the sexual desires, detracted from spiritual direction, detracted from spiritual enlightenment, and actually led you to darkness. Uh, and this is actually from Buddha itself. You have to go into the, uh, the, to the, uh, to the Indian films, to the Indian uh, theater, uh, and there are films in, uh, in, in the uh, Bollywood theater that are about uh, that are about Buddha, and you can go in and you can take a look at these uh, videos and you know, these films, and you can get an understanding of what Buddha was sort of talking about. But if you haven't actually practiced uh, the Eastern religions, if, you, if, you're, if Eastern religions are uh, in, in Eastern theology, Eastern philosophy is foreign to you, and this is then you're going to have a hard time understanding what they're talking about, and you'll find that. This dynamic, and we're not, and we haven't even touched on Christianity yet. We're just simply talking about the Hindu religion and in the way Hindus see things in terms of the culture. And we're talking about that here you have Buddha talking about uh, sexual behavior as something negative, as something what they call the left hand path leading to dark, leading to darkness. You also have in the Hindu Vedas talking about the same thing that sexuality is on the on the left hand path that that's leads to darkness. And we see this in the practice of several of the different cult, several, several different cults in India. If you look and study at the different cults, particularly the cult of Kala, you'll find this as well. Uh, and then stepping outside of this, you go into, um, you go into uh, what's called uh, anthropology, into the tribal societies. You'll find the exact same thing, that you'll find that in tribal societies, uh, sexual dominance was a norm in society. That there were certain rules, but once the rules were broken, let's say you broke a rule of marriage, uh, a woman sort of leaves her husband. Well, what happens in many cases inside the jungle, inside these uh, these tribal societies, is the woman is shamed, and now becomes open an open target for sexual attack. It now becomes permissible. Uh, to attack this woman. And this is within tribal society, and you'll see this in a variety of different societies where this is the case. And it forms, and this can actually be seen in a lot of uh, what they call indigenous tribes, when they now are treated as quote unquote Indians, as native people, and they're stuck on a reserve. They begin to drink heavily, and what's the main thing that goes on when, when they start drinking heavily? You'll see as soon as the drinking starts, and as soon as the drug starts, this is where you start seeing a massive rise, rise in sexual abuse inside the family. And the thing is, so you see that there is a cultural, while there is a cultural perspective to this, you see the, neg the negative behaviors, the negative consequences of sexuality across the various different cultures. So one can come to the conclusion, come, or, or, or actually more pro appropriately come to the observation that sexuality is bad. And what happens what happens when we talk about slut shaming? Slut shaming is the reaction of girls in their in their quest for drama because the girls do like drama, and we've seen this. All you have to do is look at the and, and ask yourself: If you're a girl and you're saying, "Oh no, I don't like drama," well, what are the shows you watch? What's your entertainment? If your entertainment is primarily drama, like these soap operas, or, or, and, and there's a lot, you have a lot of them, like Pretty Little Liar, these are your favorite shows. Well, guess what? You like drama. And a lot of the drama in your life is this, whether it's conscious or subconscious, it is this, from, this fulfill, the, it is the fulfillment of your entertainment. It's your entertainment coming into and affecting your life. And so what happens, slut shaming, girls pinning girls, you know, pinning girls against girls, this is part of the normal the normal cycle. This is part of what is done on a regular basis. And if you want to break this, you want to say, oh, slut shaming is wrong. 
Well, then you have to break the cycle of drama. You have to start pulling yourself away from drama. And this includes inside your entertainment. But this is not what you heard in IMO. As a matter of fact, in IMO, you've got five minutes of conversation, of sort of empty conversation, without really uh, having uh, <laughs> any significant degree, degree of, uh, of content. It's simply all loose opinion, and everyone is free to have their own opinions to, to, some, degree, to some degree. And that's, that's all you see in IMO. Uh, and this is why you, you do need to go further, you do need to ask, ask questions, you do need to explore further, because not everything you, think, not everything you see is true. And, you ha and even if it is true, you, you need to understand how it's true for you. How, how do you understand it? Your own understanding may not be at the level or at the point where you can say, okay, yeah, I understand this. You may, you may need to investigate further. And I encourage you to investigate further, but there's often a lot more than you actually realize is there. So, anyways, I'm going to leave this here f now for uh, for this episode of IMO. Uh, uh, <laughs> five minutes is not in depth, <laughs> you know. Uh, I'm going to leave this here for now. Uh, and let me see, make sure I get the title, title right. Yeah, yeah, IMO in depth is not five minutes, or five minutes is not in depth. You can reverse the two. They're, they're pretty much the same. Uh, I'm going to leave this here. Uh, there is more we need to discuss. There is more that we need to sort of explore. These things are going to come out. Look for um, look for Insta vlogs in, in the Bass uh, in Bass vlogs. Bass vlogs will take care of a lot of this. Same thing with cybernetic the cybernetics vlogs. Cybernetics will look at the psychology of things. The Bass vlog will look at the anthropology of things, and the two together will sort of provide more of an understanding. In other words, there's a lot more to study. There's a lot more to research here. And hopefully this is your beginning of sort of asking questions that maybe you shouldn't be asking. Breaking the standard, breaking the understanding, breaking the, uh, the standard expectations. Anyways, have fun, enjoy yourself, and see you next episode. All right. Democratic Earth. Earth.